I just want to share to, today uh, what I believe uh, just some things we're, we're going into another year. We're going to leave a, a year behind us. There's nothing much we can do about the past. How many people know there's nothing we can do about the future? Amen. But it's, this is what the Word of God says in uh, Zechariah 4 6. It says, It's not by might nor by power, but by, by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Do you believe that today? Yeah. It's by the Spirit of God. It's not by man's might, uh, not by man's power or by man's ability, only the Spirit of the living God, only by God's Spirit. It says in Psalm 107, uh, 27, verse 1, it says, Unless the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain who build it. Then it goes on in Matthew 16, verse 18, and Jesus speaking, he says, And on this rock I will build my church. I will build my church. That are their amazing words. I will build my church. And the gates of hate shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be found in heaven. And whatever you loose in earth will be loosed in heaven. You know, mankind tries so hard to build the church. Amen? That's correct. We, we try so hard. All the modern uh, technology that we have, uh, you know, there's different things trying to make people comfortable. Uh, don't try to offend people, whatever. There's all different things that different people are trying to use, pastors, goodness knows what, leadership, to build people, to build the church that Jesus said, I'm going to build my church. I think one of the hardest things for man is to let God build his church, to let God build your life, to let God do what God wants to do. And what Kendall was saying today, there are a lot of things that come and they come against us at times and, and you know when it comes against us usually we say well why did God let that happen? Why is this happening to me? Instead of saying all things work together for good yeah. for those that love God and are called according to His purposes. So that means that when something goes on we've got to have a look deeper into just how I feel about this thing or my emotional response. I've got to say God what are you wanting to do with this? What, uh, what benefit is going to come out of this? And don't give the devil any credit. Amen? Don't give the devil any credit. Because when we just say, why has God allowed this? We're, we're just more or less pulling down God and exalting the enemy. The enemy wins again. No, he doesn't. All things work together for good. Now, if we realize that it's really hard for me to allow God to really have his way in my life. Because there's something there that in most people we would like to have a bit of control. Amen? We like to have our own way. But I believe that God wants to have this way. You know, we go to uh, Bible school uh, and we train people and we get trained how to build the church. You know, really, I think all we should, should just say is, let the Lord have His way and then send them out. <laughs> Sometimes too much learning, you know what I mean? Too much... You know, we're, we're trying so many different things, free cappuccinos. Uh, that will build, you know, build people, but will it really build the church that God wants to build? What does God want to build? So we go to, we go to Bible school to train for how to build the church. Our libraries are full of how-to books. How to do this, how to do that. But you see, what happens many times is because of we're human, and, I, and I've said this many, many times, we've got this amazing power of God dwelling in us, but it's dwelling in this earthen vessel. This vessel of clay that really does not always work with the Spirit of God. My flesh does not always want to work with the Spirit of God. My flesh many times thinks it's got a better way. It's got a better idea. You know, really God, you don't really know what you're doing. I, I can do it my way. And, you know, uh, that, that's in life. And you know, there's a time there in, in, in the scriptures where Moses, you'll find this story in Exodus chapter 32, uh, Moses was up on the mountain receiving uh, the Ten Commandments from God. And as he was up there, there was a lot of things going on in the presence of God, the, the cloud covered the mountain. Joshua was halfway up the mountain waiting and, and, and praying and seeking God and, and crying out to God. But you see, the people, they were back back there. People, that's who we are. We're people. We're people. Anybody have a look around? We're people. Yes. We're all 
people. We're not some, this, some super spiritual thing, whatever it is. We're people. And, and we react to different things and different things affect us. And here is something, I, I believe, of such significance as the power of God is moving in an amazing way, but the people didn't understand it. They didn't realize what was going on. Sometimes in, in life, in church life, we don't really realize what God is doing. But I believe that God is preparing a people. God is getting a people ready for something. You know, I remember some, a couple of weeks ago, I, I said that God offended their minds so He could see what was in their hearts. Sometimes God offends our minds to see really what's on the inside of us. When things go wrong, we got to blame God or are we going to still love God? We got to still call on the name of Jesus and, and work our way through it instead of uh, allowing it to destroy us. And here's the children of, of, of God, God's people, and God is moving in an amazing way. The glory cloud over the mountain. Moses uh, experiencing something so dynamic and so powerful. But the children of God are downstairs, down below there. And this is what went on. And this is what it says in verse 30, chapter 32, verse 1. Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods. In other words, they said, Make us a god. Make us a god. We want, we want a god. That shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, in reality, out of bondage, out of out of all the rubbish and the and the and the, 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 the taskmasters and the things this man that brought us up out of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. It's amazing how quick people forget. How quick people forget. You know, sometimes I've seen people there, you know, just fall in love with Jesus and, and love on Jesus, and then all of a sudden uh, they go through something. They go through a time. God test our, 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 our flesh man to see what's really going on in our heart. Because you see, it's easy to praise God when everything's going good, isn't it? But sometimes, how many people have ever had a tragedy? How many people have ever gone through some things? Anybody, come on, just give us a wave. Tell the truth and shame the devil, amen. We've all been through things. And, and it's a test and it's a trial. It's a, it's a thing that goes on in our lives. You know, you know really what they're saying is... Uh, God's taking too long. It's taking, uh, let's do it our way. You know, as a result of this situation that happened, as a result of these people saying what they said, 3,000 men died that day. It's a very interesting thing that, as Kendall was saying this morning, that on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people, the first thing, were added to the church. Three people died from disobedience, and three people, three, sorry, 3,000 people died because they wanted to do it their way, and 3,000 people were added to the church because they said, what must we do? They said, repent and be baptized, and you shall receive, amen, the gift of the Holy Spirit. The amazing thing as we, as we go through life here, Moses is on the mountaintop meeting with God himself. Joshua there, but all of a sudden things go wrong. They asked Aaron, will you please make a God for us, that we can follow that God? Well, you know, I just want to uh, just say a few things here this morning. If you'd like to have a book, uh, look, book, look, have a look at Luke, amen. Luke chapter 1. And this is the, you know, this time of, the, of our life that we're that we're living right now in this Christmas period and, and uh, there's a lot of things that are, that are happening and a lot of things that are going on. But this is the story of Christmas, of course. And in verse 26 of chapter 1, verse, Luke, uh, verse 1 of Luke. Now in the sixth month, angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of Galilee and Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. 
And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice highly, favoured one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of the kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, therefore also the Holy One who was born will be called the Son of God. We know there that Mary came and, and she started a question, but then she said these words. She said, According to your word, be it under me. According to your word. <laughs> See, it, this is a, another significant time in the history of humanity. One of the things that we need to understand is you cannot bring forth of yourself. We can't do it ourselves. I can't do it, friend. As much as I try, I can pray, I can fast. I can do all these things, but I cannot do it. I've got to come to a point where God, unless you move, nothing's going to happen. Unless you do, unless you build the house, we labor in vain. The watchman gets up early in the morning and stays up late at night in vain. Lord, unless you build the house, Lord, nothing's going to last. We can't bring forth of ourselves. God will use us. But that which is birthed must be birthed from the Spirit of God. Yes. That which is birthed in our lives must be birthed with the Spirit of God. Yes. It's no good just having good intentions. It's no good just trying to please the pastor. I've gone to churches and visited churches and, and, and seen people react because God, I was there they didn't know who I was. I was just in the prayer meeting, the pre-service prayer meeting. People were there, Lord, no, no. The pastor walks in. Oh, son of a gun! <laughs> and I've got the shock of my life, really. And I'm thinking, who are you trying to impress him? Trying to impress God or the pastor? And so, you know, it, it is very, very interesting. But you can't bring forth yourself. That which is birth must be birthed by the Spirit of God in our lives. The giftings of God must be birthed by the Spirit of God. Like Mary. This is just please listen to this. Like Mary, we first must conceive. Something's got to be planted inside of you. Before anything can happen, we've got to conceive. Something's got to be planted. When we conceive the promise of God, you see, Jesus said, when you get born again, I will come into you. We're talking about the Spirit of God inside us. Jesus living inside of us. Something is coming inside me. The day I got born again, Jesus came into my life. That didn't mean that all of a sudden I became a super spiritual person. I often speak about my life for a period of time. I struggled. But it didn't mean any difference. The Spirit of God was inside me. The Spirit of God came into me. I was saved. I was born again. They were struggling with the flesh. They were struggling with some things that were going on. They were struggling with some of the things the preacher said. Though that there were things there that, that, that were getting hold of me, and I, I realized that I had to had to change in some areas that I didn't want to change in. Let me say it again: this spirit man came into an earthen vessel. The flesh will always war with the spirit. There's always an enmity with the things of the spirit. Whatever is born in you must be born of the spirit. Like Mary, when we, when we can see, we've got to carry the promise then. We carry the promise inside us. I carry Jesus inside of me, do you? You carry Jesus inside of you. you. You carry the promise of God, whatever it might be. 
When we carry that promise, then we must give birth to what God has put inside of us. There's a dream that's inside of me right now. There's a dream. I don't know how long I can carry this dream. I don't know how long before this dream gives birth. But I know that what God has put inside me will give birth. Amen? Yes. I don't, do not doubt that for one second. I know that it's going to be birth, but I must, I must birth what God has put inside of me. We, we must raise or develop the gift that's inside you. See, Mary did all these things. When she got pregnant by the Spirit of God, she carried Jesus in her, in, her, in her body for nine months. She carried the promise of God inside her. And then, then, not only that, but then she brought forth, she, she, she birthed this child. This child that we saw just last week as a little baby in a manger. But that little baby became the man. First of all, it became a lad. Then it became a man. Then it became the king of kings. Then it became the savior of the world, amen. Yeah. The Christ, the son of God. But Mary, she had to carry him. And then for a period of time, she had to nurture him. She had to watch him. She had to raise him. You know that there's things in your life there, there are giftings in your life. I've often said this. There are so much giftings in the church today that are laying dormant. People are sitting around and they're crying out, why, why, why? I believe it's because we haven't brought forth or we haven't birthed that which God wants to birth in our lives. <coughs> it's okay to talk like this. Yes. We can sit back and say, well, somebody else should do it. Somebody else, I'm too old. I don't care how old you are. We've got Joseph there. He preaches some of the best messages I've ever heard from this pulpit. Glory to God. It it's got nothing to do with how old you are. It's whether you're birthing and whether you're releasing and bringing forth the giftings that's in your life. The giftings don't die until... Well, actually, I don't know. I, I, this might be doctrinally wrong. But they don't die in you any until you die. There was one like man. He was on dead bones. They threw a dead body on his bones and he came back to life, so perhaps that's wrong. Amen. So, that, well, that's glory to God. Amen. You know, how many people know where I'm going? Amen. You've got to bring forth the giftings. You've got to birth the giftings that are, that, that are there. You've got to nurture. You've got to raise and develop the gift. And then release to the world the, the, the gift that's on, inside of you. Tell everybody that Jesus is alive. And if you've got the gift of prophecy, prophesy. If you've got the gift of music, you sing and praise and worship and glory to God. There's so many churches, and including this one, we need more musicians and singers. Hallelujah. Amen. Deaf ears. <laughs> got to release it to, the, to this dying world. Release it to this dying world. We must be overshadowed and overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit. I, I stand in awe of the Holy Spirit. I, I stand in awe of the presence of God. Friend, today, we, we didn't we have music what it is, but I will tell you there's enough presence of God in there to get a hold of God. Amen? Amen. There's enough of God in there to get a hold of something. <laughs> Hungry people feed. Hungry people feed, amen? And I want to tell you, you could feed on the Spirit of God there this morning. You could get a hold of something. And friend, if I can say this, how, how do I get overshadowed by the Holy Spirit? By, by watching uh, when a girl marries or something. I'm telling you. No, you, you do it when the Spirit of God's around. When you, when you lift up your antennas. When you lift up your heart. When you allow your heart to go out to God. When you allow yourself to go out there, God, I'm hungry for you. God, I need you so much. God, I'm desperate for you. God, I want you. I want to tell you, God inhabits the praises of His people. God longs and longs to hear His people say, I want you, God. I want you more than anything else. One of the things Mary had to do was she had to come and she said, God, what can I, you know, what about this thing that seems so strange to me? Lord, but, 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 he, but she said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. God, whatever, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. You see, it's faith beyond man's ability. How do I get this to be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit? 
is by crying out to Him, by reaching out to Him, by, by, by drawing down His presence over my life. I've been in meetings where, where you see people get touched and others don't. Some grumble and moan about this or that. And others are there, they're just so high in God. What's the difference? I've seen people go into a smorgasbord and complain. Others go out full. I usually go out full. <laughs> Amen. I look at that and I say, there's, there's something in here I can get, I can get something in here. I might like the, 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 the health food stuff, that, that rubbery stuff that looks like white stuff. That, I don't like that. Give me the fatty stuff. I like the fat on me. It's very obvious. <laughs> but, the, but the thing is that, that you know, how do, how do, how do you get, it's, it's you've got to be hungry for God. I, I believe that God wants to bring hunger back into us. Again, the church is hungry for God. The church can be so full of complaints and, and, and everything else, but get hungry for God. When the Lord tarries, we, we get impatient and, and, and try to make it happen. But I, I believe that this is, is a testing time. Somebody else has said this morning, 2014 has been a testing time. There's been a lot of things going on in, in the last few years that, that have really tested us. The, the financial crash and, and, and tsunamis and, and, and droughts and and you know there are people there that are, that are committing suicide because of the tragedies and things that are going on in their lives and their hopelessness. It's a testing time. Knowing what I know and different things like that, sometimes that, and not seeing certain things fulfilled can can sometimes bring frustration in your life. But somehow or other, you just got to say, God, lest you build a house, say that build it labor in vain. God, we just got to take that back seat and go with the ride and go with the flow. We've got to do everything we know. Sometimes we've got to look at Mary, a young girl engaged to a man called Joseph. You know, Mary would have had, she was, she was, a, she was a good kid. She was a young lady. She would have dreams. She would have dreams. She was engaged to a man. She would have dreams of uh, her wedding day? Is that ladies? Would that be right? Think she'd just say, oh no, we'll just go to some old barn. No, no, no. She would have been planning it. She would have been mostly with a dress and goodness knows what. It's very obvious. I know nothing about what I'm talking about. But, but, but anyhow, she... All us fellows are worried about on that day is that I hope she's not too late. Don't be standing up with that old of too long. God might get but she would, she would be dreaming about a wedding. She would be dreaming about walking down the aisle. She would be dreaming about all the planning and everything that goes with it. Weeks and weeks and weeks, months, I don't know, sometimes years of planning. And in the midst of the plans, uh, God turns up. Anybody ever had God turn up in the midst of your plans? I was looking at caravans. <laughs> I got the dog. <laughs> and oh yeah, but God turns up and, and, and starts speaking. And, and, and here she is. Mary. Highly favored one. Mary. Glory to God. She was scared stiff. God's got a different plan for her now. This plan that God's got for her has got nothing much to do with her plans. This plan is actually could bring a lot of shame to her in effect. This plan is, is beyond her ability. She could have, could have the potential to lose the one she loved so much. She loved Joseph. She wanted to marry this man. This, this was her hero. This was her lover. And now the Spirit of God says, you're going to have a baby. How could this be? I don't know a man. 
The Holy Spirit's going to overshadow you. You're going to conceive. You're going to bring forth a son. His name's going to be Jesus. Glory to God. How would you like that one? <laughs> this one that she wanted to spend the rest of her life with. She could lose him. As a matter of fact, we know as the Bible says that, that when she told Joseph, I don't know what, what the conversation would have been, but Joseph would have obviously said to her, well, Mary, that's the end of that. But I'll tell you what I'll do, Mary, I'm not going to make a show of you. I'm not going to make a shame of you. I'll do it privately and secretly. I'll, I'll just, but we're just going to part company. I don't know, have you ever had anything like that happen to you? Where, where you've got to just say, God, you are nothing, really. And that's what you've got to do, what God wants you to do, amen. And she said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Perhaps she must have loved God a little bit more. She loved Joseph, eh? You know, there's an interesting scripture here that I just want to close with. Let me just say it again. Sometimes God offends our minds to test our heart. That's what it says in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. What that says in, the, in my margin, in my Bible, perilous times means times of stress. You know, I, 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 I've been on while on this earth for a little while. Joe, you've been on this life for a little while. I don't, I, I don't know, I've never heard of so much stress that these people have been. Stress. You know, the good old days, you know, it was different. You just had a push bike and <laughs> wheelbarrow or something else. But today, there's so much. So, so much. Stress, 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 stress. People have got themselves into financial difficulties and the stress of it. People just are trying to keep keep alive, keep going. Stress. Stress is one of the major killers, you know that today? Horrible things. People, yeah, heart failure. Last times there will be a stress will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying his power, and from such people turn away. You know, friends, today we, I, I believe that God wants to really quicken us. Kendall was talking at communion about, a, about an end time revival. The Bible speaks about an end time revival. But there will be no revival until we get hungry. There will be no revival until we say, Lord, have your way in me. There will be no revival until we do get rid of some of the stuff at this end time. You see, when, when God tarries, See, I, I, I've been in ministry a while now. I remember when we came to the Sunshine Coast. Nancy and I were, were, were rookies. We did not have a clue. And that was the best thing that could have ever happened. You can get too smart, you know that? You can get too smart for God. But we were such rookies. We had no idea. And, and we just loved Jesus. And Jesus built His church. We saw him build his church in an amazing way. We've seen, uh, been overseas and seen thousands upon thousands of people give their lives to Christ. We've, we've, we've seen in 93 a great move of God where, where people just got ushered into the kingdom. Amazing things happen. But you see, over the last few years, I've, I've, there's been a period of time where there doesn't seem to be much happening. People get restless. I believe in the end times, those last days when people get restless, we become lovers of self, we become lovers of pleasure, we become lovers of things, we become 
you know, tra traders, we, we, all these things start going on in our lives because we don't have any answers. We start blaming one another. But friend, I want to tell you, I know what's stop, stopping Jesus from coming back. It's us. Amen? Oh, how many people want to get hungry for God? I wish there was a pill. Well, actually there is. It's called the Gospel. <laughs> it's called the Bible. That's, that's pretty sick, I know. <laughs> that was out of my mouth before I realized that I was hungry. Get hungry for God, folks. Get hungry for a move of God. Don't let the devil steal. Don't let, don't, don't let the giftings that are in your life get aborted. Man will try to abort those gifts. People, things will happen. He'll use people. To, the devil will do whatever he can to get you to abort the call of God that's on your life. I'll do everything. If you're hungry for God, if you want something, if you want to do something, I'll do everything within my means to help you. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you. We just stand at our feet. Position for God. Might be better with that position. You know, today is the last day or the last Sunday of our of 2014. We're going to enter it next week into a brand new, brand new year. I don't know about you, but I'd like to dig a hole and sh shovel some rubbish in. Put some stuff in there and cover it up and forget it, amen. Put some stuff behind me. Put some stuff that I've dragged through perhaps. Stinking by now. It stinks, amen. You might be a bit like that too, because I think most of us are like the rest of us. But if you're in this place today and I don't know, you just say, God, I I, I guess I'll be a bit restless. God, I I, I wonder why things aren't really happening the way they should. And you want to put some things behind you too. It's going to open this altar this morning for people to come. Stand before God, not kneel. Just stand before God and say, God, I just want to put some things behind me. There's some things I just need to put behind me and I want to bury it right there. That I believe God will honor. God, I'm hungry. For you. you might say I'm just hungry for you, God. I'll, I want, I want that hunger back, or I, I just want more hunger. I want whatever it is, whatever it is. But God's saying there, you want to respond to God. He's going to ask you to stand this seat. Come and stand out the front. No music, no fanfare. Just you and God. Would you like to do that today?